emotional when you see a four-year player like Tyson playing his last home game on senior night? Yeah, I was thinking about it yesterday and uh, you know, how much I'm going to miss him. And just uh, what a security blanket he's been for me. You know, he's just been so, you know, reliable and uh, consistent. And tremendous work ethic. Uh, you look at his improvement from day one to, you know, uh, where he is now as a player. It's just a tr tribute to him and his work ethic. And, you know, he's, he's a guy that spends countless hours in the offseason in the gym. He's what the term gym rat, you know, came from, a guy like him. He's a gym rat. He loves the game. He'll be playing it and then coaching it, you know, the rest of his life, I'm sure of it. He could not live without the game. Um, that's how much he loves it. We'll go ahead and uh, Joel, we were just discussing you and your love for the Atlanta Braves oh. and the fact that you follow every inning. 20 days away from opening day, man. Can't wait. <laughs> Coach, obviously uh, another shot at Ole Miss and you know, another opportunity against the 1-3-1 press. What have you... Looked at, obviously you've seen it before, and what have you looked at with that press and, and ways to it, do It's that? A, uh, not a press as much as it's just a half-court trapping uh, defense. And uh, I think that uh, we've, we've had a chance now uh, where we'll work down a couple days in preparation. And, uh, you know, so I think we'll, we'll do a better job attacking and a better idea uh, of what we're doing. But... Really, when you go back and watch that tape, you know, I thought that was the key factor after the game. But as I watched the game again, our defense was horrendous. Uh, and uh, so we've got to be much better defensively. And I think they're so good offensively. I mean, Ole Miss really executes. and They're playing at a high level. You know, look at their, you know, last few games here. It's been really, really good offensively. Henson had 19 in the first half against Missouri the other night. You know, Tyree's Tyree, you know, he's one of the best players in uh, the history of Ole Miss and leading scorer in our conference, tremendous player. Uh, you know, uh, their big kid side played great against us the first time offense. He had 18 points, and uh, they were all, you know, uh, tough, hard baskets, and he, 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 he's a good player. Obviously, Buffin's a key for him, and really he's done an excellent job. And Schuler, Schuler's, you know, their second leading scorer, and he's... A tremendous talent and has really had a, a heck of a year. So they're a very hard team to defend, and we've got to do a good job in that respect. Go cool front middle to Logan. Tyree's had such, you know, played so well against your teams over the last couple of years. How do you try to slow a guy like that down? Because it seems like as he goes, Ole Miss goes. Yeah, he's just a great player and, a, and a, you know, a guy that I think will uh, be playing this game for a long time to come and be very successful. Uh, so, you know, we've got some things that we'll try to do a little different. When you go back and look at that first game, early in the game, obviously, you guys had the lead. What can you take from that opening you know, 10, 15 minutes of the game where you were in control and bring to Saturday? Yeah, I thought that when we had the lead the second time towards the end of the first half, it really hurt us, uh, uh, you know, when Abdul got his second foul. It was about 6.30 left. And from that point, uh, you know, our lead dissipated, and I remember going back and looking at that game. We lost by 25, and the plus-minus was Abdul when he was in. We were even, and when he was out, we were down 25. Uh, so he was, you know, pretty important. Uh, but, you know, there's a, there's a lot of positives we can take from when we had the lead and did a good job, uh, you know, offensively. I thought we, you know, really hurt ourselves with some bad shots that helped them uh, get back in it and cut the lead off that last three to two at halftime. And actually one, they took away point because DJ was on the line for a three that was reviewed and determined that it should be one less point. I know we talked <clears throat> talked about this a lot, of being on the bubble and, and needing wins and all this and the other, but personally, how much scoreboard watches did you do this time of year? I'm just concerned about us, Paul. Um, you know, that's all we control. Go ahead and get it to Danny P. Over there, far left, the coach. Coach, a few weeks back, we asked you about Tyson and his love of the game. You brought up a story about the game program and his elementary teacher. Could just could you tell us about that again? Yeah, we were at LSU. That was the third conference game of the season, and uh, 
she and her husband, and they were friends of the program. I'm trying to remember who knew them really well. There were people that knew them really well within our program. And, uh, and I don't know if it was Richard Williams. Like He was like a manager or your assistant trainer here. He was, her husband. And she actually, she told me she had him as a four-year-old. And uh, four and five years old. And uh, that he learned how to read and learned numbers from basketball programs. That's all he wanted to deal with. He wanted those Mississippi State basketball programs. This is what he was interested in, and, and that's how she helped him <coughs> learn his alphabet, learn to read, learn uh, numerical numbers. And uh, it's just got to be, uh, you know, incredible for uh, people here in Starkville to watch this young man grow up from being born here to going through to being at all his dad's games you know, being a ball boy for both Mississippi State and for Starkville High School, and to be around the game his whole life and lead a state championship, be the, you know, Gatorade Player of the Year. And, uh, you know, it's a tremendous story. And, and, you know, think about him and his father being the only father-son in the history of the SEC to each score 1,000 points. That's special. That's incredible. Right here in Mississippi State. Staying along those lines with Tyson, uh, he was, I think, in your second recruiting class, and he was part of that class that really helped to turn this program around. When, when you look at him from a freshman to now, what, what areas do you think he, he's well, Obviously, he's progressing a lot, but what sticks out to you as far as the progression of his game? I think he's become a better, uh, first of all, you know, he showed up here at 149 pounds dripping wet. So he's gotten a lot stronger and, and bigger. Uh, yeah, I think he's become more athletic. I think he's faster. I think he's quicker. Uh, I think that uh, his uh, defense has definitely improved and the understanding the importance of that relates to winning this level. I think he's you know, got a very high basketball IQ, obviously, uh, his coach's son. Uh, I think he's improved as a shooter. I remember when he first got here, and it wasn't a big change, but it was something that was really important that he picks up right away. When he first got here, he'd catch the ball and he'd drop it to wind up to shoot, which almost every high school player I've ever coached has done. Because they initially are not strong enough when they're first learning to shoot jump shots. They're dropping it to get momentum, to get a, you know, some uh, oomph in their shot to get off the ground. But he was able to just, you know, now he, there's no drop. It's just catch with that quick release, which makes it even harder to close to him because it's quicker. And then he's able to shot fake it and read it. I think he's really improved his uh, point guard skills with the ball and, uh, you know, being able to, you know, be better coming off ball screens with the ball, playing lower, uh, you know, really being good at reading, change of pace. I and mean, you've seen him, you know, where I remember at Missouri last week, you know, really good at reading things and slowing down and then Bursting, he's got a great, you know, hesitation and go move where he'll hesitate. You have to respect the jump shot, and he goes by you. I mean, he's he's improved, and you know, he's a good rebounder in many facets of the game. Go back to Logan. Your final regular season game here at home, you know, senior day against your in-state rival. Do you want your do you try to temper those emotions, or you you want your team to try to feed off of that? I, I think they feed off of it. There's no you know, trying to make you know less of it. It's, it's a big deal. I mean, this is our last home game of the year and, uh, you know, it's against the team that's uh, most important for us to win against and, you know, we want to play our best for a lot of reasons. You're still in play for a double bye in the SEC tournament. I know some of those factors are beyond your control, but how crucial is a double bye in the SEC tournament? Well, I mean, uh, to, to only have to win three games to win the conference tournament, is mathematically a lot more likely than having to win four. Anything else for Coach before we get the players in here? All right. Thank, Thank you. you.